The Senator representing Delta Central at the Senate, O.V. Omar Gege, said despite a recent vote against the devolution of power to states, the National Assembly may still consider some relevant issues in it. Public affairs analyst Chris Akiyu joins me now to talk more about, uh, about this. Uh, Chris, thank you very much indeed for joining me this time. Uh, well, uh, let me start by asking, is it by accident, is it by chance that Nigerians at this time are asking for devolution of power? Uh, thank you and good morning. Uh, I don't think it's by chance. I think from the very foundation of our country, even pre-1960, there have been agitations about minority rights, fear of the minority, uh, fiscal federalism issues, and um, it's only that I think w w that agitation is beginning to reach its crescendo where we must uh, take certain actions. And, and it's coming in all kinds of forms. They call it all kinds of names, whether devolution of power, whether be it um, restructuring or resource control. It, it's one thing Nigerians are asking for, a system where power is speculated down to the common man. Uh, I think it's, it's high time that we take it very seriously. But Chris, does it bother you that those in the position of authority or in position of leadership, the National Assembly, for instance, are not given to this. They are not buying into this, which is one of the reasons that it failed at the National Assembly the other day. Does it bother you? Yeah, uh, I, was, I was taken aback like a whole lot of Nigerians, over 100 million Nigerians, who saw the issue of devolution being voted down by our representative. And I was even more shocked when Senator Ahmed said that it, the voting pattern reflected the, the voices of the people. But well, that is a white lie, because as far as I'm concerned, whether Nigerians from Karanamoda to Patani to Beninkebi to Lagos uh, want devolution of power. The reason why our country is always in this lockdown is because there's too much power concentrated in the center, uh, in the exclusive list, in the, in the, in the concurrent list. Uh, and, and government at the center is burdened with common things that should be done at local governments. Take, for instance, primary health care system. Local government should be able to deal with that 100%. What does the federal government have dealing with primary health care system? Take, for instance, simple community roads and, and, and boreholes. Uh, it's because there's so much power in the center, the, the state and the local government are left with nothing to deal with. Most states are overwhelmed. They wait for the center to give them um, authority to do certain things. This kind of um, uh, concentration of power in the center is the reason why certain states can explore solid mineral or oil and gas. So if there's dissolution of, devolution of power, where it's well defined and, and, and the central government is concerned with issues of national security, legislation, um, defense, and mega infrastructures, the, the trunk A infrastructures for national interest, the, the local governments will be seen to be able to be in the entire country, for instance, apart from certain local governments like Obiakmo in Port Harcourt, um, uh, some local governments in the Lagos State, and maybe one or two in Kano, most other local governments will not be able to do a one kilometer road in this country because there's no power. Money is just sent to local governments probably to pay salaries, and they are like an appendage of the state government. The state in itself is grappling with inability to pay salaries. They have employed people. So, so we need to begin to look at this. And beyond managing resources, there are other issues of securing communities where you have community policing, you have state policing, all these things. If power is properly devolved downwards, I think this country can fix it. In other climes, the, the legislators put their country first. Look at America. The, the president said he was signing the sanction against Russia, not because he believed in it, but because it is in the interest of Americans. Here, legislators and people in government think about themselves instead of the people that they represent. And that's why they can vote such a very uh, right, Chris. valuable document or, or, or bill down. All right, Chris. Um, one more thing. The, the, the um, acting president, of course, a committee has been set up uh, by the APC to take a look at you know, some of these issues. Do you think that they have the political will to carry the process through? Well, I'm one person who have always said that when Nigerians set up committee, then they're buying time, buying time to allow tension to calm down and then they push it behind the backwaters. This is a realistic thing. The bill is in the House. What the president needs to do is to ask for the bill to be sponsored and looked at. That bill is a bill that will move Nigeria forward. Uh, for me, I, I think that bill is even more important than the bill that they, they were talking about, uh, uh, not, too young to, not too young to vote, 
uh, not too young to be to, to occupy an office. Uh, the constitution had already spelled it out. Anybody who knew what he needed could have contested from age from the said age. Uh, this bill of devolution of power is key. It's like the oil and gas, the, the petroleum industry bill. Those bills must be dealt with, and so that the country can move forward. Whatever committee the president is, is um, the acting president is sending out now should do its needful and go and do the necessary lobbying in the national assembly if that is what they need, and let's get this bill passed. But tell us, uh, uh, Chris. Overall, what do you think are the real benefits of devolution of power? Yeah, first, uh, this, this misgivings about struggle for supremacy in the center will be reduced, barely reduced, because power is no longer at the center. Center is to provide service and legislation, so it will be reduced. Secondly, states will, will have capacity to develop at their own pace, at their own pace such that powers put within the states are managed by such state governors. Uh, local governments will also uh, be able to express better this autonomy that has just been passed because the, the certain powers will be devolved to that level. And the citizens will also definitely have a, a freedom to express themselves from the grassroots. Uh, as it is now, make all the noise in the local government, it doesn't make any impact except you get to Abuja to make the noise. But when, once power is concentrated, I mean devolved downward, local government chairman, chairman will therefore know that they have responsibility and answerability to their people. And I think that beyond, beyond the lip service of, of devolution of power, it is what a country like ours, that is a federated unit, uh, d deserve. What we are running now is a unitary system. It will continue to be like a lock jam because there's so much that the federal government needs to do before the people will feel the impact. So this devolution of power, which people just call devolution of power, is beyond just power sharing. It has to do with economics, with health, with education, with security, and citizenship. In fact, it has to do with patriotism for the people. All right, Chris Akio, the Public Affairs Analyst, thank you very much indeed for talking to us.